Hey you guys, it's Matt. And this is Jordan. And welcome back to the second podcast, Couch Pillow Talk. <laughs> welcome back to the second podcast. Yep. Shouldn't it be welcome to? After that short break. You know what's funny as well? You screwed up the intro on the first podcast as well. Did I? Yeah, you said something like, uh, welcome back to the new version. Yeah, that's and right. And you're like, yeah. not new version, it's the new podcast. But yeah, this is Couch Pillow Talk. We're going to be talking about topics that we actually haven't written down this time, so we're going to no. be kind of winging it. Winging it. But I'm going to intro with that thing I was telling you about when we were eating lunch today. Yep. So last night, boom, hits me, video game idea. Okay, I like it already. Let's go. So you know the video game series Infamous. I do. Made by Sucker I'm, Punch. They're I'm very aware. good. You know how it does like the whole good and evil sort of thing? Yep. It'll be like an infamous game where it's sort of like encouraging you to make your own choices about good or evil. Yep. But then later on in the game, you realize that by making good choices, there's been a person that goes around and makes evil choices and they, they just show up and they're your bad guy for the game. Yeah. And you have like a cool epic fight with them at the very end. My idea is that for all of the game, that would just be like an AI person that you sort of see around the place. Like you might be chasing them in a mission, like trying to track them down. Yeah. But then in the very final battle, it'll be somebody else that's been playing the game, the evil route, and it'll put you in a PvP match for the final battle of the game. And that'll decide the ending of the game. If they win, they get a cool ending for their side of the game, but you get a bad ending. That'll be really cool, but the logistics of that, like... It's very hard, but... Have to have... They do, like, on- online invasion stuff all the time, like Watch Dogs did it, uh, Metal Gear Solid did it. the timing of it, though, you'd have to, like, if no one was doing... If you were the first one to finish, and you're just sitting there have to wait true. for someone else to get there. But I imagine it wouldn't be very hard. Yeah. You'd get to it, and there'd be someone out there somewhere that did it the evil way. Yeah. And then just, they'd just pop into your game. Yeah. I think that's a cool idea. It would be pretty cool. Um... It could also be an option for it. Like you get to the very end, and it could be like, "Dude, what we didn't tell you is that this could be done online. You're, but you've been following someone this whole time. That's another player that's been doing evil stuff. Would you like to fight them? And you, you, and you could just go no, and then it's just like a, st- a standard boss battle for like a video game. Do you know what I just thought about that? What I would really, really like. Go if, for it. If it was the same sort of thing, um, but it was a co-op game. So you and me, where these. Um, it, we'll just go with the infamous sort of thing like you have superpowers and whatever yeah, yeah, yeah and then you get these good and evil choices and we're doing the same missions we're doing all the same stuff but we don't get to see what it, the, each other chooses oh so you don't know if your mate's actually on yeah. the good side so we could be end up going against each other the only thing I say that is if you and I were to play it together I could pretty much guarantee you're doing the dick stuff because yeah. you always do the dick stuff in Infamous Yeah, I, I understand that you said that when you played Life is Strange it made you sad yeah. to dick people over than Infamous but- you're like whatever yeah, I don't know. I cared more about the actual characters in Life is Strange. I know, but didn't it make you feel bad that you were meant to be a hero and then Infamous 1, you can just poison the entire water supply to it's save fun. yourself from... Oh, it's a bit of pain. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> but I just like the uh, the bad powers better. It's just more fun to go around blowing stuff up you know what? and whatever. I like the good powers better. Wow! Whoa. Said oh, it. There's a rift in our friendship. No, but I like when you do the good stuff. How they're more the good. The good powers are focused more around precision stuff. Yeah. Because when you're being the good guy, you have to be precise so you don't hit people that yeah. you're not meant to hit. You know what I mean? It was definitely well designed. And then um, like yeah, the bad guy, you can just blow everything up and you don't really give a damn. I know, but to me, it's just like oh, so I just I can just go through the game and blow everything up. Yeah, that's so fun. It doesn't, fun, seem, it doesn't seem very fun to me though. I like the idea of being like, oh man, I have to be careful. About I what thoroughly I'm enjoyed that game. Well, you know what? Serious. I was about to say, why don't you play it from the Second Son? But you have played it, haven't you? Yeah, that was a good game. And the First Light DLC. It wasn't DLC though; it was standalone. Yeah, but it was weird. It was a very short game. Yeah, but that was still cool. I liked it. It made it a female character. Yeah, you don't see that very often. I still want that paper power. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. The paper. I love pa- pa- that. Paper trail. That's what it was called. Yeah, that was. That was, I was cool. gonna say origami. Track yeah, or that was like hard that. too. It was very hard. That was an a- that's ARG technically alternate reality game yeah. where it makes you do stuff in the real world and you do it I in like the game. That. that is a really weird way to do things, but I do like it. Do you remember that Amnesia game? Not the um, the what's up the horror one. There was just this um website, and they had this game inverted commas called Amnesia, and you had there was like sort of lateral thinking things. And it was just ridiculously hard. Like, no one had ever finished it. And we had a mate that was really good at it. And um, he had to do things like, it would show you an image. And then, you yeah, have to, like, find out things in the image. Or, like, download the image and then change it to black and white. And then change the contrast. And then it's got a word there. And then you could have put that word in the URL. And 
all this crazy stuff. I don't recall this. Oh man, I want to get back in. I couldn't find it when I was looking for it. A couple yeah, weeks I'm, just, ago. I'm just having a brief Google now to see if I can find it. I'm not seeing anything. It just keeps coming up with the Dark Descent. I yeah. don't care. It's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully we can find it. Oh, yeah, we'll do some digging. That's really cool. Anyway. I was thinking you were going to talk about that Flash game called Don't Escape. No, not Don't Escape. Oh, what was it called? I can't remember what it was called now. But it was a Flash game, and you start off... It's like one of those point-and-click ones where you have to find the things to get yourself out of the room. Yeah. But it had a really cool story. The main character had amnesia, so he wakes up in the room doesn't know where he came from or how he got there. Mm. And then there was a really cool twist at the end of it, and they made like a second game after that, and it was really, really interesting. Yeah. I should try and find it. I think it might just be called Escape the Room, but the problem is there's so many Escape the Room games now that yeah. it's so hard to find the one I'm looking for. But I'm sure I will. Well, considering the first one is one and a half stars, it's probably not that one. I'm still going to click it, but oh well, I'll have a look later on, do some more digging for that. <laughs> Welcome to listening to us Google things. <laughs> so, you didn't talk about your VR game idea that you had. Didn't you have a VR game idea last did time? I? I thought you did. Um, I could probably think of one now. Well, I've got one as well that we've right. talked about. Actually, I think we may have discussed this together and sort of formed the same idea. So, you guys know about the HTC Vive, the one with the controllers. I'll answer for the audience. Yeah, yeah. Some of them like, oh no. I imagine there'll be a lot of people that are like, what the hell is that? It's basically like an Oculus Rift, but it has controllers that come with it. And it's way better. It tracks... So, I'm going to get technical with it here. So, it tracks your headset. It's got these two lighthouses. They're called lighthouses, but they're just like two little light boxes that you set up in your room. And it plots out your room, like it scans your room and like detects your room and like tra- uh, tracks it. Yep. And it tracks your movements through that room. So when you're playing the VR game, you don't have like a Xbox controller to walk around like on Oculus. You just, you walk around yourself yeah, and you I move like in Much the better. VR space in the game. And it even tracks like where the edges of your room are so you don't like walk off the edge of the stage. It like comes up with barriers to show you that you're getting close. Yeah. But yeah, and it's got two controllers to do like your hands in the game and stuff, and it's really cool. It's the best VR thing I've seen. Yeah, for sure. I prefer it over like everything else out there. But my idea for a game like that, because it's limited in like the space you can move, it would be a detective game where like the space you move in is a crime scene, yeah. like someone's dead or something, and you like you can pick up items like Ellie Noir style. Yeah, and except you can actually look at them super close and look at them at, like every angle to see if there's anything like you can find on there. I think it'd be rad. And then. You know how Ellie Noir, the big thing was like the facial animations. You meant to watch them to see if they've got like a tick or something to like yeah. indicate they're lying. I'll just get you so could, close to people's faces. <laughs> my idea was like you could just stand like that close to them and it'd make me laugh a lot. It'd yeah. be really goofy, but I don't think it'd, it'd matter because VR like stuff can be goofy. Faces, yeah, you can just sort of get right up and be like, you, you, you lied to me? You lied, man? What's that? I reckon it'd be really good. I like the idea. Yeah. Because you can always just have like a button over to the side where it's like, all right, I'm done with the crime scene. You just go boop and hit the button and it's like, mm. takes you to the next or area. Or even just like, um, uh, heavy rain sort of thing like with those glasses that what's his name has uh, Norman Jaden yeah. yes yes I sick. wanted I so badly wanted to see a full could, game of that yeah and then you could like pop up your menu and like look at all the evidence that'd be that pretty good that's, a, that's an even better idea yeah they should get so Quantic fun. Dream should get together with people that make VR stuff and oh, make that I would love that so much because I feel like Quantic Dream gets too much bad re- like rep for everything they do all yeah. their stuff they do is very good yeah like even beyond like it wasn't a great game but it was a very interesting experience yeah and I saw them play that, yeah. they do very individual experiences we're probably going to play it on the channel to be honest yeah. I'm going to make you that's, play it that's fair enough I'll, I'll, I'm keen to give it a go it's uh, got I've, Ellen Page in it I've heard good things and bad things about it Ellen Page is a cutie patootie most of the like most of the things I hear about it is you bring up Beyond and then people go, oh, 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 and I'm like, okay, is that your whole opinion? But then you talk to me and I say, play it. Yeah, so pretty play much. it. <clears throat> I don't like, yeah, I still think you need to start doing uh, critic critiques. I guess, but the problem with me is that even when something is bad, I can't help but be like, I can see what they were going for and like yeah. try and give them credit for it. Like, even in a movie that's not very good I can kind of be like I still enjoyed it because I can usually see that they had a creative direction and they wanted to go for so I'm like I can't really just rag on it obviously they thought it was good when they made it it's like when people rag on video games and they go oh like when the Fallout ending people have been talking about the Fallout ending which I don't even know what it is but they say it's not very yeah. good no I still haven't finished Fallout oh, I haven't finished I don't know what it is because people support it for me oh well yeah no I have no idea um, why didn't I plug that in? <laughs> I brought my PS4 up earlier and turned it on and everything and didn't plug it in because I didn't play it. I didn't plug in the HDMI. <laughs> it's just sitting there. That's a bit sad. of a sidetrack. What was I saying? Um, yeah, 
It's the same with the flirt thing. Obviously, when they made it, they didn't be like, oh, let's just dick over our fans and make a really crap ending. Mm. To them, it was a good ending. They had the product and they've gone, this is what we like about this, the product we wanted to ship. And they shipped it and then people didn't like it. That's not what they intended. I don't see yeah. why people are always like, oh, obviously, Quantic Dream didn't care and they made Beyond a really terrible game. It's yeah. like, well, no, Would not that was idea. their vision. Just because you didn't like it didn't mean it was deliberate. Yeah. Same with the, the whole Kojima Konami thing. It's like, just because it was had some stuff that didn't make the final cut doesn't mean the final cut was unfinished yeah Kojima shipped it because that's how he wanted it yeah. I think mean, we talked enough about that sort of stuff in the first episode we did but you got me riled up again <laughs> <laughs> oh, a few words that's all it takes and I didn't write down those ideas I talked to you about the other day either when I said I'd forgotten one and then I had other ones to talk about I can't remember what they are now I know that Hitman I want to talk a bit about Hitman and like the whole online thing yeah so moving on to our next topic, which we just remembered, um, <laughs> Xbox or Microsoft recently announced that they are looking at doing a crossplay feature with PS4, mm-hmm. so that Xbox One users can play online with their friends on PS4. Matt looks like he's ready to just burst with what he's got to say about it. Well, so I think first of all, it is a win-win for Xbox, no matter which way this goes, because. Like uh, everyone's focusing on the fact that Xbox is the one, or that, that, they that Microsoft the one- is the one that's like pushing it ahead. Like, oh, well, this that's is our idea. That's because they're the ones that announced it. Yeah, but Sony's already doing that. You, like with Borderlands and stuff, you could play with your friends on PC and that. So they already had the cross-platforming thing, but now Xbox just wants to jump on board with that, and it, it, everyone seems like it's the Xbox's idea. <laughs> but um, if Sony agrees to it, then great, Xbox made a great move and they'll probably get more sales because people won't feel like they need to go to PS4 to play with their mates. But if PS4, if Sony says, no, we don't want to do that, then, oh, Sony's the bad guy. Everyone needs to support Xbox now. So it's just, it's it was a really smart move, I think, on, on uh, Microsoft's part. So it'll it'll be interesting because like uh, pe- oh, <laughs> pretty much the main reason anyone buys Xbox is the exclusives which first of all I don't really understand because I, I personally think that PS4 has besides the fact it has way more I think it has better exclusives anyway but that's besides the point it but yeah this is just another reason that people can be like oh well I'll just get Xbox and play with you anyway okay so here's I've never I, I've read a couple articles, but this one seems to be the one that's actually talking about what the cross network thing is. Yeah. So it says here that when they announced cross network play support, it was uh, for Xbox One and Windows 10 to begin with. So mm-hmm. playing Xbox One games with PC users, yeah. which is something that PlayStation has done. Like they did Portal, you could do it on Steam. Someone could own it on Steam and play it. Like which is weird. Across with you, Microsoft didn't do it first, considering they have Windows. Yeah. <laughs> but. That was the main thing is that they were launching this because they did the Windows thing and now they're doing saying they are now allowing developers to support online play <coughs> uh, across networks including other consoles. Yeah. So say this means players on Xbox One and Windows 10 using Xbox Live will now be able to play with players on different online multiplayer networks including other console and PC networks. It wasn't technically them being like we want to do it with Sony. They just sort of did it and they were like oh we're making it open so you can play with other consoles. And like you said, that's sort of them being like, well, we're pretending, or not pretending. I don't want to paint Xbox and like Microsoft in a super negative light here and yeah. make it seem like we're coming off bad towards them. But the way they've done it, it's just like, so now it's on Sony to be like, do we want to yeah. do it? Or do we want to look like the bad guys that say no? They pretty much can't lose. <laughs> Unless they spin it like exactly right. See, here's the quote here. Microsoft said this is an open invitation for other networks to participate as well. And that's just like a direct hint at Sony being like, your move guys. Yeah. And I think um, Sony replied... Yeah, Sony speaks on the cross-network feature. Um, let me have a look here. We should put a link to this article in this. Yeah, you can read the article that I'm looking at. I'll uh, I'll save it somehow. I'll, I'll keep track of it. Um, so here we go. Having found out about Microsoft's announcements, Adam Boys, Vice President of Publisher and Developer Relations at Sony Computer Entertainment, they made a they typo, says, we're always open to stuff like that. It's all about what the developers and publishers want to do. They get in touch with us and handle everything on a case-by-case basis. Which goes back to the whole Portal thing. Yeah. Where it was like, hey, you can play Portal with people on Steam. Obviously, Steam wanted to do... Or Valve wanted to do that with Sony. Yeah. And they, they made it a thing. I remember the article I read. 
when people were like, oh, Sony's not bothered to do it. Xbox is so much better. And the article was saying, it was like, we've already done it before. Yeah. We've been doing it for years with Steam. And people were like, oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like the idea of the cross-network thing, but just like handling all of it, it's going to be so weird because mm. it's like, can you add friends on Xbox on your PS4? Yeah, and so how does nice. it differentiate between things? Because their gamer tags on Xbox can have spaces in them where I don't yeah. think PS1 uh, PS4 <laughs> I, 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 mean, I was going to say the PS1 can't yeah. like the PS1 the P, you know what I mean the it's PS hard to describe ones. what I'm trying to say the, the, the PlayStation the right. tags can't d- have spaces that's yeah. what I'm trying to say <laughs> with my bad English skills yeah well I don't know like the other thing is um like with say Black Ops 3 because uh, PS4 is getting the DLC earlier yeah. now. How's that going to tie in as well? Well, see, that's not as big a problem because when you play Black Ops, if you jump into yeah. a lobby and people in that lobby don't have the DLC, it won't put the DLC maps on there. So it'd just be for a month if PlayStation uses it. Oh, but then again, but yeah, if you will be like everyone, there'll be a lot of Xbox there'll users so on there. Many. Then yeah, it's hard. And another thing unless as well, they come, um, unless they implement in games, if you can have just PlayStation users that's all mixed thing, yeah. but see the thing is as well it falls on the developers because when you play online it's their servers yeah like PS4 and Xbox and like well, Microsoft and Sony can work as hard as they want towards letting you connect to people like if I could go on PS4 and just put in an Xbox name and add them they can work as hard as they want towards letting that happen but when it comes to the actual game it falls on the developers yeah that's why um, if anybody remembers a couple of years ago there was a game called Defiance and that came out and people could play across all platforms let me just fact check here that I'm not wrong but I remember when it came out people were saying you could play on any platform with anybody on any other platform mm. like it was just across all of them uh, let me that's a movie that is a movie it's also a TV show there was a game called Defiance it may have been based on the um, what's it called TV show movie Ugh. does it say here it actually doesn't say that's not very helpful but I still remember when it came out like, it's big selling point was that you could play across all consoles and play with each other yeah I don't get it why does it not say it here ugh that's alright anyway yeah it was it was just an MMO RPG sort of thing yeah oh it went free to play on PC oh nice oh no it went free to play on all platforms in 2014 there you go there you go as well 2013 it came out you, can, you guys can fact check and tell me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure that game you could play on any console with anyone on any other console and that fell on the developer who I don't who is that Tryon Worlds never yeah. heard of them before I'm gonna click them and find out sick but yeah it, it fell on them to make it happen because it's yeah. their servers and with all the PS4 and Xbox stuff it's their servers like when you play Black Ops it's not being hosted by Sony it's being hosted by Activision on yeah. their dedicated servers speaking That's of which it. do they shut down their old servers for games I don't think they do. No, because I'm pretty sure like Modern Warfare is still online. And you can still pop in... Well, I, th- I think Modern Warfare on PC, people host their own servers now. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Black Ops 1, you can just pop it in your PS3 and it still runs online. I've got Modern Warfare 2. I played that a couple weeks ago and it's still online. Yeah, That's really weird. They host those servers for so long. Yeah. A lot of games don't do that. Which is kind of balls if you want to go back to it. Because like, you always go back to like your old Nintendo games and you're like, oh, these are the best. But like, you can't really go back on play online and this sort of actually segues into the Hitman thing. Mm. So Matt and I have been playing Hitman. All the episodes haven't come out yet, but obviously you've seen we played Hitman at least one or two times. Yep. Actually, no, it'll probably just be at least once by the time this comes out. But no, we've played it a fair bit. I think we got like six parts out of it because there's a, there a lot of stuff there. Which, by the way, that was only episode one. Yeah. And we've gotten six parts out of it and there's a lot of stuff there. And I'm still playing it now. Even though I've done mostly everything, I still get a kick out of playing it. But um, it's got this always online thing which everyone's been complaining about because the online stuff hasn't been great. Yeah. It, the connection sort of drops. We had that happen yeah. when we were recording, <laughs> which was kind of a shame. But, ugh, this is making me ill. <laughs> He's drinking an iced coffee. Like I said, it's making me ill and then I took another sip. <laughs> I'm going to put that down for now. But, ugh. Yeah. They had this always online thing because you, you put challenges and like leaderboard stuff online. Yeah. And I guess it's their form of DRM to make sure people don't pirate the game because you've got an always online thing. The only problem with it is that if you don't play online, you can't unlock challenges and stuff. So if you 
want to unlock like other options to start off like you know how I showed you you could start off like undercover at the auction like yeah. straight up yeah. if you want to unlock that you have to play online and if you unlock it and then play offline you can't use that option it bars it off it is very peculiar but I could see why they want to do like a whole online thing to keep you connected and keep you streaming your results and stuff online yeah and once they fix the connection issues it'll be fine but everyone's been complaining because they're like oh this launch has been terrible they're doing episodes and now they're doing always online you can't even get on the servers most of the time it's so dumb I don't look forward to like three years down the track when they take the servers offline it's like it'd probably be longer than three years yeah. and I imagine when they take the servers down you can just play it offline like they'll probably do a patch to amend all that stuff once they're gu- done with the game they'll be like here yeah. we'll just patch it out so you can now do all the challenges and stuff without having to be online it's just another thing where it's like again they did this because this is how they wanted the game to be yeah I don't, like, complaining like, like that was a terrible launch because they're doing the game how they wanted to do it That's and like sense. the same thing happened with GTA when it launched they yeah. couldn't anticipate oh. all the players yeah, like, I remember, we, we were mad when it happened but I wasn't like so mad that I was like oh screw Rockstar they're the worst developers ever I was like oh yeah. this kind of sucks but we'll just wait because the servers will clear up obviously that was heaps funny the first time we tried to get on and we waited for so long and then I just glitched into the game and yeah. like, I didn't do the first race <laughs> I was right. just in, like running around I was like what the hell is this I can't uh, do things I remember I managed to get in and do the race and then get into a session I'm like guys I'm going to invite you just get in do the race and I'll invite you yeah. I was lucky enough to get in and then you guys were like we can't get on yeah and I was like, what's going on here? And then eventually it dropped me out. It was like, oh, you've lost connection to Rockstar Service. I was like, oh, that's a shame. Mm. And I couldn't get back in after that. That was it. But that cleared up after like a couple of days. And yeah. the Hitman stuff has sort of become more stable now, I've noticed. But it's still got its issues. But it's just, they've made all these single player games up till now. So like Code Name 47, Contracts, all that stuff. And now they're taking a bold new step trying to do this always online thing. Yeah. Just because it didn't work doesn't make them the worst developer ever. It's just not something they could anticipate. Mm. It's just something that happened, and they're like, oh, crap, well, yeah, we need to fix this now. It's important to take the risks anyway. I just don't get... like People still hate Rockstar now, and I don't get it. They've given us, like, 20 free DLCs for online. Yeah. And people are like, Rockstar are the worst. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> How many developers do you know would be this committed to fixing their stuff? The developers of Arkham Origins said they were not going to bother fixing bugs. Yeah. They were just going to work on DLC. And then we have, like, Rockstar fixing everything and giving us free stuff. And people are like, Rockstar are the worst. I'm not buying another Rockstar game ever. Yeah. It's like, oh, so one game made you hate Rockstar who did, like, all the GTAs, Red Dead Redemption, which is a sick game. Which the second one is probably coming. Yeah, out. that's right. There's been speculation of a second Red Dead and a HD remake for PS4. If an HD remake comes out, I'm buying it. Yeah. I don't even care. I love that game to bits. I wish my PS3 would work so I could play it now. <laughs> but my PS3 doesn't work. So I'm sad. Sad times. I mean, I'm keen for a Red Dead Redemption 2 yeah. because it'll be on PS4 and they're looking at doing like a co-op element. That'd be cool. Yeah, co-op is the shiz. I'd love to just like, if you and me could ride around and I could lasso you off your horse. That'd be really I just fun. want it to be, we can I be, we can be cowboy mates, we can ride around and then we can just go and like do like stagecoach robberies, train robberies, all yeah. kinds of cool stuff. I really want like a co-op open world game where like we can do missions together and help each other out and then like if we just for instance put it in the Fallout universe where you can make your own town we just go like completely different ways build our own towns we can trade with each other and like we like meet, we can, maybe meet up later and yeah. I could be like what have you done to your town be awesome. because in Fallout I did the boring stuff where it was just like it was a simple town and I put in stuff like power outlets and Matt, I made a sky village Matt built a sky village where was it the red rocket um, no 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 it was a, no, yeah the drive-in but Red Rocket, I think, is the actual is the yeah. uh, mechanic place. But I can't yeah, remember. The dri- if, Starlight, Starlight yeah. Driving. That's it. If, if, yeah. So if you go to the drive-in and you go at the top of the screen, and then you can build little stairs up into the air, and then just build platforms off the top of that, and you can make a six sky. City. The thing is, as well, I don't know how many people know this. You can get rid of the radiation at that place. Yeah. You just delete the barrels. Yeah. And maybe I think a car or two might have exposed radiation. But you know, I went to that party the other week where we were at the beach. Yeah. There was two people there that were talking about Fallout and they were talking about the Starlight driving and they are like, oh, good luck making a settlement there with all the radiation. And I was just like, you can get rid of the radiation. And they looked at me like, you're lying. I'm like, yeah. no, you can do it. And they're like, how the hell do you do it? I'm like... That's like this is, Did I, people I, not Google things? I like, thought that was common knowledge. I just did it. I was like, I was just deleting everything. I was like, 
Well, there's barrels in the water. It's probably there. Yeah. So they were sure. stunned. They're like, oh my god. It's, it's like, I just opened up a new world for them. They're like, I can now go and build something at the Starlight Drive-In. Yeah. I'm like, yep, you can do that. That's a good place too. Yeah. It, it, just because you could do your Sky Fortress there. Yeah, pretty much. <coughs> <coughs> Let's try and figure out another topic now. How did I lose track of my topics, man? I don't know how this happened. Alright. So this is coming back around to the Xbox One PS4 compatibility thing because... I went back to the tab as we were looking for stuff to talk about and there was a thing there that said um, Sony didn't sound too keen. Yep. So you're now going to be part of the Reading Articles Out podcast. That's what we're doing. Nice. So <laughs> Shuhei Yoshida who's like the actual president of like Sony Computer Entertainment Japan yep. like the, the actual company he uh, uh, he was in an interview with Eurogamer and they asked him about it and he said that they've been doing cross-platform play with PS3 and PS4, obviously. No, PS3 and PC. Mm-hmm. You can't play online with PS3 and PS4 users, can you? You know. Um, apparently they did it with Street Fighter recently. Oh, nice. And Rocket League. Oh, cool. I did not know that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> when asked outright about whether PS4 and Xbox One cross-network play was a possibility, he said that PC is an open platform, so it's much more straightforward to connect. But connecting two different closed networks is much more complicated so we have to work with developers and publishers to understand what it is they're trying to accomplish yeah. that goes back to our thing of saying the developers really have to be the ones that are in for it we also have to look at the technical aspect and the technical aspect could be the easiest The we, have to, we also have to look at policy issues and business issues as well which sort of makes sense as well because I imagine the privacy policies would be different between Sony and Xbox yeah. and those are things you have to accept to play on both their services so connecting them would be like do you have to then be rerouted to an Xbox privacy policy thing and it's like then do you have to make an Xbox account to like verify that you did that yeah. with your PS4 account like you have to link the accounts it's like what where does how deep does it go yeah it's just it's kind of like uh, um, Microsoft is throwing the idea out, like hey this would be cool and everyone's getting behind them and Sony's <laughs> like guys we can't do that Sony's just like oh, what have it's you done Microsoft <laughs> like they're how the bratty s- little brother why how sick would it be <laughs> if PS or Sony was just like you know what let's do it and they put all the work in and then they got right towards the end and, and Microsoft were the ones that were like yeah, it's actually ooh pretty hard. we've made a mistake I'd love it if Sony came out and they're like yeah let's do it alright we've already done our part it's your turn <laughs> and then Microsoft was like oh no that's so much work Okay, so... Matt can you, I, wait, hold on. Just, can you imagine, like, the fights that would break out, like, even, like, in COD? Like, people would have um, PS4 and Xbox in their emblems, and then they would just start a massive war against each other. Ooh, I'd be crazy yeah. elitism in that. Alright. So, Matt and I, we had topics we wanted to talk about, but we both seem to have forgotten them. Yep. So, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start looking up some internet facts, and we'll see if Matt knew any of them. And just looking at them now, I doubt that he will... But you guys might not know them either, so let's start. So, Matt, do you know where the term surfing the internet was coined? Or when? Yeah. Apparently, it was in 1992 by a New York librarian. What? <laughs> Jean Armour Polly. And apparently her AKA name is Netmum. Or <laughs> Netmom, because it's American. Yeah. We're Australian, so we say mum. Mum's the word. Mum. Alright, the most played song on Spotify is Wake Me Up. <laughs> By Vichy. Oh, what? <laughs> Not by Evanescence. Like they, <laughs> so, there's probably people looking for the Evanescence one and they're <laughs> clicking on that, hey? Yeah, probably. I mean, I'd be looking for the Evanescence one if I had Spotify. That seems funny. The first tweet ever was sent on March 21st, 2006. I didn't realize Twitter went back that far. Yeah. By a man named Jack Dorsey. Do you want to know what the tweet was? Sure. Just setting up my Twitter. <laughs> and Twitter is spelt T-W-T-T-R. Nice. <laughs> he took out all the vowels. Um, oh, you might know this. Do you know what the first YouTube video ever was? Yeah, it was a dude at the zoo. Exactly, yeah. It's called Me at the Zoo. Yeah. It was uploaded April 23rd, 2005. That. It featured Jawed Kareem, who is one of the YouTube founders. Yeah, I watched that. I don't think I've watched it, but how it, many views does it have? Probably a lot. It, it It's nothing very exciting. It's just I'm, I'm going to look it up. And then after that, I'm also going to look up uh, Old Mate Gangnam Style, because I want to see how many views that's got now. Oh. I wonder if that's ever so going to be dethroned as the um, the like most viewed video ever. I didn't realize how many um, subs uh, Fail Army had. Oh yeah, they've got they like got 10 like, million yeah. now. That's insane. I looked at it today. I was 30 like, oh. million views on the original first video YouTube video YouTube, <laughs> video, YouTube video ever. 
10 years ago. That's the only I've ever seen where it says 10 years ago yeah. in the little thing that says how long ago it was. 10 years. That is insane. I what the second video was. The second video ever? Really? I don't know. But I have got a fact for you that's not on this thing I'm reading out. It's about Gangnam Style. Do you know it broke the YouTube like views counter? It broke... like. It couldn't process it. Like, YouTube did not account for there being that many views on a video, so yeah. it couldn't count past a certain point, so it just broke. They had to, like, up the count rate so that it could accommodate the fact that Gangnam Style was blowing up. That's his funny. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I like how they had to make an update just for one thing. Yeah. But Gangnam Style is currently on... 2,541,000,000. That's crazy. So, two-sevenths of the planet have watched this video... <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, that is insane. Uh, so, getting back now to this uh, sick fact check thing. A single Google query uses a thousand computers in 0 0.2 seconds to retrieve an answer. So, if, like, if you Google something like, yeah. is, Matt, oh, is Matt stupid? Well, yes. Uh, 49 million results in 0 0.29 seconds. I was talking about this to my brother the other day. He did not understand how, like, significant that was yeah. I was like that's like less than a second and it found 49 million results yeah that is insane and then yeah they use a thousand computers I wish I had a computer that was that powerful I wish I had a thousand computers so that I could run an HTC Vive on all of them yeah <laughs> oh let's see what else is interesting in here uh, apparently 500 million tweets are sent every day okay that and doesn't surprise me that's the first website ever is still online yeah I'm gonna open that new tab what is it I did look that up. I can't remember what it was. What was it? It is just... It says info.cern.ch and the page looks like that. The World Wide Web, W3, is a wide area hypermedia information retrieval initiative aiming to give universal access to a large universe of docs documents. Nice. Universal access to a large universe... What? <laughs> it, it reminds me of... I read an article the other day where it showed like an original like internet article in a newspaper without like this new thing called the internet and it was like what this is an insane idea <laughs> it's like look at this now that seems good uh, let me see if I can find it you kind of wonder like what that's coming out now that everyone's like <gasps> is gonna yeah. just be like yeah that's a thing like, now I future. can I can understand as well if you think back to like what must they have thought of the internet we yeah. can see what people thought now of making money on YouTube yeah like if we were to go to our parents and be like hey we're just gonna be yeah. YouTubers and make money they'd be like my mum has actually said to me, she's been like, so how do people make money on YouTube? How does that work? Yeah. And I've just been like, what? And she's like, how do people do that for a job? That, that doesn't make sense. They must be lying. I'm like, no. <laughs> people do it for a job. <laughs> it is a lie. I don't think she said that a lie, but she's like, I don't, yeah. how does that work? She was so confused. Yeah. Um, okay, so the GIF format was invented by Steve Wilk, an engineer at CompuServe in 1987. Okay. So before the internet, which is weird because GIFs are popular on the internet now, mm. Do you know what the actual pronunciation that he says it is? Jif. Jif. Yeah. I don't understand that. Jif. Because isn't it... Mm, oh, what was it s an acronym for? Um, something interchangeable format. Graphics interchange format. I don't get it. Why would it be Jif if it starts with a G? I don't know. I really don't understand. I like it how Wikipedia though says better know as acronym GIF and it has pronunciation for GIF and GIF. Yeah. It doesn't say one way or the other because it's just like nobody can decide. Oh, that Gangnam Style is still the most viewed YouTube video of all time. Yeah. That's in here. Um, the most popular Tumblr, Tumblr is the official updates page for Minecraft. Oh. Ah. That's the most popular Tumblr page. That's interesting. That's very weird. Yeah. I wonder what's going on with Minecraft these days. Probably a lot. Since it got sold yeah. to Microsoft for what's, like a What's bit he doing nowadays? Notch? Yeah. Let's find out! Notch 2016! Google time! Probably living in that weird house he bought. Oh, he goes on Twitter. Does, Should've realised he was on Twitter. Does his house look like Minecraft? <laughs> if I was the creator of Minecraft, I would buy a house in real life that looked like a Minecraft house. Like, just a modular... Um... I, when, when, I want to find out when those modular phones come out that we found online a while ago. Oh, that one where you can, like... Yeah. to change the pieces that would be sick let's find out I really yeah. hope that's actually going ahead I kind of like this idea of doing a podcast where we're just talking about random stuff and yeah. just like segueing also oh, there's was a it, phone was that... it phone blocks or was it Project Arrow I have no idea I think it was Project Arrow but there's a phone I want to get called the Yota phone the Yota phone yeah what is that it's basically is this what you thought yeah yeah, yeah. 
Um, so Yoda cool. phone is just like a regular phone, touchscreen, whatever on the front, and then on the back of it, it's got another screen that's also a touchscreen, that's like a Kindle sort of screen, and like it is really cool. And like your notifications can come up on the back, or you can send things over to the back, and it's just really cool. And I want they don't ship to Australia yet though. Yeah. It's really annoying. Sort of getting towards an, another technology thing. You know, smartwatches? Yeah. They don't appeal to me at all. But if they made an HTC smartwatch, I'd probably try and get it. Yeah. Because HTC does really good stuff. Even yeah. though they got a bad rap for some reason, I, I don't, don't get it. Yeah, Matt and I both got HTC phones. Like, I was an iPhone user for ages. And then after a while of using Matt's phone, I'm like, I have to get myself an yeah, HTC the, phone. Yeah, the reason... So, this is what happened. This is why I got a HTC Story right? time with Story Matt. Story time. So... Um, I was at a club, <laughs> and um, I had an iPhone five. five I think. No, you had a four. Four. It was a white four. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. iPhone four, and we were playing four S or whatever. And I had it sitting there on the pool table. Like you, I, you must have been using it, and then you put it yeah. down to do a shot or something. No, no, I stood there. I was talking to someone, and then I didn't even realize. I looked down, and it's fallen on the ground, and the screen was fine, but the whole like the it just was screwed up, and I was like, what the hell. No, I oh, like, yeah, it wasn't cracked, but when you looked yeah. at it, it was all like... Yeah, like all the weird colors yeah. and stuff. I was like, oh, that sucks. So I went home and had a good drunk sleep. <laughs> and then the next day, we're like, let's go to... Uh, no, our- yeah, but I had a dream that I um, woke up oh. and I googled... Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Good phones for the same price. Oh, phones better than iPhone for the same price. So I was like... And when I woke up, I was like, that's a good idea. And then he actually Googled, and Googled it. it. And like five pages were like, oh, get the HTC One M8. And so like, we went to right. the shops later on to get lunch so, and night stuff. And Matt yeah. bought himself a new phone. Straight up. And like, it was the best decision he's ever made. Oh, I love this phone. I remember there was a one point where your charger port was broken on yeah. your HTC. And it's like nearly three years old yeah. now. And, and so still going great. Matt was like, I'm going to send it away, get repaired because it's still under warranty. So he well, was it still under warranty. Yeah. Yeah, it was free. You got it yeah. prepared for free. He took it to Dick Smith where he bought it. Dick Smith's going under, by the yeah, way. It is. We didn't check to see what the uh, prices are now. Yeah, no. Since it's been no, I'm pretty sure it's still twenty five to seventy. Okay. Yeah, I love it. This is sort of a segue story, but uh, since Dick Smith has been liquidating, every time we go past the one at Tugra, <laughs> oh, we just uh, told everybody where we live now. Every, every time we go past the one at Tugra, we always look at the prices because it started at twenty percent to forty percent off, and yeah. Matt and I are like, they're closing down. They should be doing more. And then the next time we went past, it was 50% off is the maximum. Yeah. And now it's seven, it's 25 to 75% off. So they upped their minimum percentage off and then upped their maximum as well. Yeah. And I'm, I'm waiting for when we go there and it's like 90% off. And then I'll just get a lot of stuff. I would too. Yeah. I would absolutely get a lot of stuff off. But anyway. But yeah, anyway, getting back. Matt sent his phone away. So I had to use an iPhone. He had to use an old iPhone oh. again and... This was back when I still had my iPhone and it annoyed me. Matt was whinging so much about it and I'm like, it can't be that bad. It's like, I use an iPhone permanently. Why is he whinging so much? Now that I've got my HTC, anytime I touch an yeah, iPhone, I'm like, worst. this sucks. But yeah, and I'm not that... Okay, so I don't have anything against iPhone. I don't think I have well, anything no, against Apple. You don't like iPhone. What you should yeah. say is you don't have anything against people that do like yeah. iPhone. Okay. We are just super fanboys for our phones that we've yeah, got. Much. But um, the whole thing with iPhone is... It's just kind of the status symbol of having an iPhone. Yeah, it really is. It's it's just stock standard. I have an iPhone. I think that was the only reason I really got one in the beginning is because yeah. I had we had it's just easy. We had maybe. iPods in school, the iPod touches, so we were and used to the interface, and it was like everyone for had iPhones. Android. For Android, there's so many choices, and it's just intimidating if you don't do the research. And you're like, oh, I don't know what the hell I'm getting. If I know, if I get an iPhone, I know what I'm getting. It's like the safe choice. Yeah. Even though so, it's expensive. That's why a lot of people get them, I think. And they're just afraid to make the switch because they're like, oh, just it's just so much easier than Android. Android's so hard to learn. It w- it's which, not that hard to all, learn. It's not very hard to learn. Spend- I think I, I picked up my HTC day one that I bought it, yeah. going from iPhone to it, and I pretty much knew what I was doing. By the I, end of the I, like, even like, Still, I'm still finding out things. Yeah, you, like, oh, you don't I know do everything. Well. You find out new little tricks to do, and you're like, oh, it's this is greatest. cool. But it's like, you can just know the basics of how to use yeah. it from the get-go. Because there's stuff that is similar to iPhone as well. And people just... Yeah. Like, I've got a friend that uses iPhone. And she was like, there's no home button on it. Like, what's the deal? And I was like, oh. And I, I was telling her about how there's the three buttons down the bottom. Because she lived uh, far away. And I was like, yeah. there's three buttons down the bottom. And she's like, oh, I don't understand it. I'm like, there's, there's a back button, a home button, and a Which switch tabs button. Handy. Like, switch apps. And she was like, oh. I kind of like how iPhone has the one button. I was like, 
okay, I kind of get what you mean. I was like, you can do that. You can set it to have one button if you want. And she's yeah. like, no, nah, I kind of like iPhones. <laughs> then when she came to visit, I showed it to her and she's like, that makes more sense than how you described it. I'm like, yeah. that's how I described it. <laughs> and I do really like how there's like there's a back button and then there's a home button and there's yeah. a, a switch to uh, Super convenient. button. It's just, you just have so many more options of what you can do. Not in an intimidating, oh, I don't know what to do way. Just like, you've just got more freedom of choice. You can have it as simple as you want to have yeah. it as well as what I like. I like how this became talking about Android. Yeah. I want to point out to you, the minimum cost of this Project Arrow smartphone, yeah. $100. That's that's pretty good. That's insane. So, yeah, the it, it's basically a f- Lego phone. Yeah. Not, in essence. Not actually like actual Lego. It's like it's sort of like a build your yeah. own phone. So, you get like the basics yeah. and you can interchange the parts. You get the, the parts. plate that's got... Um, and you can like attach a bigger battery to it or a better camera yeah. and bigger screen it says here Project Arrow smartphone is scheduled to begin pilot testing in the US in 2016 with a target bill of materials cost of $50 for a basic grey one so mm. all the, the plate stuff on it would be $50 and I guess $50 would be for the rest of it like the internals and stuff Yeah, but that is a damn cheap phone and like I, sure it could be expensive over time when you're customising all the parts but, but there's still. people that buy new cases for their phone like all the time and it's like why are you doing that like my phone has a clear case on the back that's yeah. it I like it. And the thing is, if, if you got one of these phones and you dropped it, like, you don't have to... Like, if one bit broke, yeah, you can just, just replace, replace that one bit. bit. <laughs> it's insane. Because you'd be able to do diagnostic tests on it. Like, oh, oh, if you, I'm sure, like, if you took it into a shop where they sell them, they could just, like, slot the bits into a, um, one that's connected to a computer and be like, okay, this works, this works, It's a this Google works. thing as well. Oh, nice. It's a Google project, so you know it's going to be good. Google's good at everything. Mm, except the glass thing. That didn't go so well. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. It, they've stopped doing it now. Oh, have they? Yeah, I'm pretty really? sure they did. Let's find out. Google Glass. Because they were like, yeah, this isn't really working. Little little, little, little Google here. <laughs> Matt, sing a song or something to keep me interested. Do you believe in love and love? I can be the <laughs> You may have uh, misunderstood what the or maybe the article. I didn't read it. Someone told me about it. Says it says Google announced it would stop producing the Google Glass prototype, but oh, remain okay. committed to the development of the product. According to Google, Project Glass is ready to graduate from Google X, which is the experimental phase of the project. So yeah, maybe whoever you heard it from misunderstood. Yeah. Because uh, there's no way they'd can that project. They've put so much money into yeah. it, and like. It ships for 1500 and there's so many people interested in it. So it's like, why would you can that project? Oh, man. But anyway, we've made it to like 42 minute mark. Nice. We could end here. Do you want to? Yeah, sure. <laughs> we've just talked about random stuff. We hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Let us know if you prefer confu- this format. Our slight confusion in between where we're like, what are we talking about on this podcast? Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for joining us. Maybe next time we'll talk about movies like we wanted to. Or if you've got questions or whatever, anything you want us to talk about. Yeah, we'll any topic suggestions, just, just say it. comment. Like I said last time, we'll do research. We'll come back and try and be as informed as possible. I got a new jacket. Nice. I really like it. Sweet. <laughs> like, favorite, comment, share. Matt doesn't subscribe. like it because it's a denim jacket. I, did, I told you when we were getting that, <laughs> but I like it. But you don't like denim stuff. I, I wouldn't wear it. R- really? Oh, I might wear that, but I, I wouldn't wear a full denim denim jacket. Would you wear a denim shirt? Um, if it's like a button up, maybe. That one that I told you I bought from Boohoo is a button up. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll show it to you when it. I get it. I'll yeah. definitely be wearing it. <laughs> this isn't really. <laughs> we don't really need to. Put this is this a sick outro. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> maybe next time we'll talk about fashion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See you later, guys. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye.